I know it may sound cheesy, but I'm slowly learning that loving and appreciating myself unconditionally and nurturing the inner child is super helpful for tapping in even more into my intuition. And I think this is something that you, the listener, would really benefit from hearing. Not to toot my own horn or not to put all the focus on me. I just want to use my experience as an example of how this lesson can really work in someone's life. And I'm still in the middle of that lesson, still in the middle of that work, but I really want to share an update with you on how my mediumship development is going and how the inner child and self-love work is completely related to that at this moment. I can't wait to share it with you here on Third Eyesight. My name is Juan Francisco, and I'm a psychic medium and tarot card reader. I've always been curious about the supernatural, the paranormal, and psychic abilities, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories with us. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. So on this episode of Third Eyesight, I really want to focus on... um, not switching my screen around for those of you watching this on video. (laughs) Um, I am now on one screen. This is great. And uh, actually, before we get to what I want to focus on on this episode, in the last episode, if you heard a high-pitched mosquito buzzing noise, it was because, and I just discovered this just now, my ring light, it's a, it was a very affordable ring light. And it's a smaller size ring light. And it was the reason there was this buzzing sound that was going on in the last episode. So sorry if that was annoying you. I noticed it in the recording. I didn't know what to do about it. So I left it in because I couldn't. I don't have the magic hand. So like erase that from an audio clip or an audio file. But no buzzing noise this this time. uh, Excuse me. No buzzing noise. So I'm using my desk lamp, which seems to look sufficient on video. We'll see. So on this episode, I really want to focus on how, as the title says, how self-love can improve your intuition. That may sound really cheesy. Many of you who know me through my content or who know me personally by chance or because we're friends know that I am not somebody who is into like toxic positivity. I'm not into being fake and like everything's, you know, roses and daisies. and Everything's great. Well, no, life can be very hard. So although the title may sound a little Pollyanna, it really is the truth. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with being a little Pollyanna sometimes, a little bit, I don't know, cheesy. Sometimes cheese is good. Sometimes being corny is good. And this is something, the focus of this episode, the title of the episode is something that I'm slowly learning and appreciating and grasping more the more that I do mediumship mentorship. So in my last episode, I think I mentioned that I started doing a mentorship with, um, I might have mentioned her already, but just in case, maybe I already did, and I'm losing my mind, and I'm f- totally forgetting that I mentioned her by name, and, but I'll just, I won't mention her name for now, but I'm working with a mediumship mentor here in New York City, and one of the first things she said, because she got to know me a little bit on a friendly level before we started the mentorship. One of the first things she said to me was in order to help me tap into my intuition more, I need to do inner child work. She said, for you, we have to dig into the inner child work and really learn to love and talk to the inner child. And at first I was a little resistant. In therapy... That's something that my therapist brings up a lot is inner child work and being the adult in the room for your inner child that's inside of you. And so part of me felt uncomfortable, but also interested and excited about doing this with the spiritual mentor. And just so you all know, the reason that I'm doing mediumship mentorship with her is because at her center, I'm going to be doing, uh, it's not... 100% confirmed yet, but it's quite possible, quite probable that I'm going to be doing a mediumship demonstration night where I'm up in front of 15 to 20 people and I'm doing readings in front of people for people as other people in the room are watching, like a live mediumship show. 
but it will be very small scale. So it's probably going to happen. And the reason I'm engaging in mediumship mentorship with her is because she wants to help me prepare myself for this really big, what is for my mediumship career, a big deal. Cause it'll be my first time doing mediumship gallery reads and a demonstration in front of people like that. And so inner child work is what she is sort of prescribing to me. And she told me journal to or write letters to your inner child and meditate. And I'm not getting it perfectly. And she even told me, don't beat yourself up if you didn't meditate yesterday, like, or you don't meditate today. Do the best that you can do the journaling and the letters. And so I do it when I can. I try to muster up the energy. I didn't do it today. and I can't wait to do it tomorrow. Um, I could do it today. So I have time today. It is only 3.42 p.m. We'll see. But um, the whole point of this is, is just to do it when, when I can. And what's been happening is at first the letters to my inner child were very like, hey, uh, baby Juan, which is what she said, to, what she calls it, baby Juan. Hey, baby Juan, today I'm going to the store. And it was kind of like a diary of what I'm doing in the day. And she said, go deeper, ask the hard questions, bring up the hard topics. And I have been doing that. And it's been slowly transforming me between that and therapy, having those two things together have been just so great because they're working together, though they're in different parts of my life. Because, you know, therapy is, you know, mental, mental health and psychology and spiritual mentorship does feed into my mental health, but it is coming at it from a different angle. And so having the two things at once and both addressing the inner child has been really great. And the things that I have discovered, the things I've realized is that I am such a perfectionist because I was taught to try to be perfect growing up and that I'm afraid of what people will think about me. What if I say something wrong? What's my reputation going to be? What is, my, what is my reputation going to be like after that? This huge concern about what people think about me. And I've come to realize these things. I think I've always known they were there, but I've come to really understand how much power they have over me and my life by doing this inner child work. And what's interesting also is I mentioned in my last episode that when I started this mentorship with with her, I wasn't getting booked for readings. I stopped seeing readings getting booked. I haven't been booked for a reading in the last month and a half. I'm having my first reading booked in a month and a half next week. Well, actually, yes, it will be next week, according to the timing of this episode. And that's my first reading in a month and a half with a, like one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And then maybe, maybe God, the universe is saying, you know, Hey, you're doing mentorship. You're asking some big questions, delving into some big topics about yourself. Maybe take a break. <laughs> maybe that's what's happening. Um, but it has been wonderful. And I even told her, that when I met her, it's like I, I wanted my growth, some some level of growth to come or to happen. I needed something new and different in my mediumship path. And she I happened to meet her because um, she opened this center in my neighborhood. And ever since then, I just feel like there are more possibilities for me. I still struggle. I still struggle with self-doubt. I still struggle with knowing my worth and not worrying about what people think, but I'm actually like hyper aware of these things now. And I know that I need to do something about those feelings I have, those thoughts I have. And so it's so neat and so intriguing to me that one way, there are many ways to do this, to be a better medium, but one way of being your own best medium, own best psychic, is by learning to love and appreciate yourself more, to love yourself unconditionally, and to love your inner child unconditionally. And if you would have told me that like a year ago, I would have thought, that doesn't make any sense. Because what does my inner child and my struggles have to do with helping other people? 
if I'm channeling someone's father for them in a mediumship reading and their father's coming through from the other side to tell them they love them, they know the prayers they send to, to their father, what does that have to do with my inner child? What does that have to do with my hangups and my insecurities? I need to put those things to the side in a reading. Those things should not ever come up in a reading and they don't or they shouldn't. I should not project those things onto a client, onto someone I'm reading in a reading, right? But the way that the technique of mediumship works is there has to be an element of self-trust. As a medium, I have to trust myself that what's coming through is coming from spirit and I'm not doubting it. And I'm not therefore doubting my ability. And where does that doubt of my ability come from? Where does that not believing in myself come from? There's an inner child there that felt like he was told not to believe in himself or to trust himself, to follow his gut and his passion. And like I said, a year ago, I would have thought that one has not, <laughs> one has nothing to do with the other, you know? And so I'm curious to hear from all of you, because this is definitely a topic that I would love to hear some of my listeners share about. There's that saying, you know, they say Ru RuPaul says this, many people say this, if you don't, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? And I do believe it is possible to love other people unconditionally, even though you don't fully unconditionally love yourself, but it probably makes it easier to completely love someone unconditionally when you completely unconditionally love yourself. Probably makes it way easier. Doesn't mean that it's black or white, all or nothing, like you have to love yourself to love other people, but it probably makes it easier to interact with other people when you love yourself more because you're judging people less based on the standards you have for yourself. That's my experience though. That's just my own personal experience. And so if being a medium, in terms of being a, a psychic medium, I'm slowly learning. I'm at a place where I'm learning to try and trust my ability more and more than anything, trust spirit more. And because I'm such a perfectionist, I've tried to tell spirit, no, can you show me this? Tell me something about this instead of surrendering and letting spirit come through whatever they need to come through with not dictating to spirit because my ego wants to get it right, get it perfectly or bring something up that will land the reading <laughs> that will make it sparkle. No, it's not about that. It's not about being perfect. It's not about making sure the other person thinks I'm a great medium. It's about trusting what comes through that what comes through is meant to come through. And something that my mentor has taught me is for me that I need to really center my channeling energy in my heart chakra. And I've been practicing that in mediumship circle when I do readings for people. And it felt so different. It felt amazing. And so it's just, you can see it in my face. I f if you're watching my video version of this podcast episode, I'm like lighting up right now. And I don't really know why, but I also do know why. I just feel like I'm finally coming to a place in my life where I'm realizing things that can help me unlock my confidence. And that's so special. I feel so blessed. And it's not that this was bestowed upon me um, in a way it was. Yes, this, is, this experience is a gift from God. And at the same time, I wouldn't be able to enjoy this gift if I didn't reach out for it and take advantage of it and use it and apply it and enjoy it. This could this feels like it's been sitting here the whole time, but I've never made the effort to reach into this part of myself to heal these parts of myself. And it just took this timeline of in 2023 in May meeting this new owner of a metaphysical healing center and doing mentorship with her and then her inviting me well first her inviting me to do a gallery slash demonstration event at her place at her at her center and then her saying we need to do some mentorship work and i just highly recommend that if if you can if you're able to do mentorship of any kind, psychic, medium, mystic, spiritual, 
if you can do it with somebody, I highly recommend it. And my term with her is going to be ending soon. And I'm starting to think, do I want to continue this? And I do. I do want to continue this. And how do I continue this? How can I how can I make sure that I continue this? I just have to think more about that in terms of commitment and energy financially, honestly. Um, but it's just, it's making a world of a difference in how I'm growing as a medium. And I'm just, I just feel so thankful to her. So thankful to her. So self-love, improving your mediumistic abilities. And not just me and mystic abilities or just intuition in general, like the title of this episode says. We are all psychic. We are all intuitive. And what's interesting is that so many of us disregard this side to us, this psychic ability that we all have, because we've been taught either number one, only special people get that ability. That's totally related to self-worth. We're not worthy to have that ability, worthy enough to have the psychic ability, number one. Or number two, we're taught that it's evil, to be afraid of it. To tap into the psychic ability is to harness the powers of the devil or evil. Fear. Fear. Self-worth and fear. Or lack of self-worth and fear. And so right there is the proof that what we've been taught would be we, what we've been conditioned to believe growing up for so many of us that were raised with those ideas is that we're not worthy and we should be afraid of it and or one or the other. I'm sure there are other different things that people heard growing up, but I'm just speaking from my, po- my own point of view as someone who grew up with religion and also of thinking this was a special gift only some people could have and I'm sure there are many listeners who grew up with a similar experience childhood experience so I leave you with this if you want to improve tapping into your psychic abilities or overall intuitive abilities trust yourself more trust your ability more And trust the other side more. Trust God, your higher power more. Trust and surrender. And trust and surrendering is very tricky for those of us who want to control everything and make sure things are perfect. But I promise you that when you surrender and you just say, I know the old saying, let go and let God. You just let go and let your higher power and the universe and spirit, let them do what they need to do with you and telling them, I only ask for what's in the white light. I trust that what you bring through is in the white light of God, or I trust that what you have to tell me is for the highest good of myself and those concerned around me. And then giving the reins over to them. Letting them say what they need to say or have you feel what they need you to feel. Trust more. And before you can learn to trust more, you have to learn to trust yourself more. And to trust that that you will not be worse off for trusting more. Especially when it comes to matters of the soul. It's not always easy to trust things in the physical world, but in terms of matters of the soul, what do we what what do we have to lose really? What do we have to lose? We don't really have anything to lose, I think. I wanted this to be a short episode. Number one, because I think if I keep talking, I'll say the same thing over and over again. And number two, I do have a commitment to run to. <laughs> And, you know, speaking of noises that I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast episode, my building is doing something in the hallway between the apartments. Sorry if you hear it. I just really wanted to record this episode now, days in advance. And it, uh, I picked the, uh, uh, obviously, the opportune time. If you hear what you're hearing in the background, if you hear this mm, noise, they're doing something in the hallway, and I happened to pick the best time to do this episode. But... 
anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening as always. And I will see you on the next episode. I have an exciting interviewer too coming up in time for spooky season in October. So stay tuned for that. And uh, one more thing I added to my website. Before you book a reading with me, you can have a free consultation with me. 20 minute consultation, absolutely free of cost to work through with me what reading it is that you do want to have. Is it a mediumship reading or a psychic reading? Because some people have sometimes confused the two. So you can do a free consultation with me. You can gift a reading to somebody this holiday season through my website. And the readings that are available are 30 minute. They're now 30 minute mediumship readings and 30 minute tarot card readings. I learned very quickly, and this is part of my mentorship training, that one hour to sit in the power and to stand in the power, it's not very easy. Not very easy. And I've done it. I can do it. But it seems that messages come through best based on my own personal experience too, and also what my mentor has shared with me, they come through best in 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So I've decided to decrease my my readings to 30 minutes and adjust the pricing accordingly. But I just wanted to share with you all in case you noticed it or if you haven't, just to keep you or make you aware because I think it's fair to be very transparent and not just switch things on everybody. So those are the updates on my website. I think the free consultation is the most important update. And I hope that people take advantage of that. Until next time. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover on Third Eye Sight, head to my website, juanfranciscospirit.com slash contact and send a message my way. If you really enjoyed this episode, leave a review wherever you listen. I'd really appreciate it.